Dr. David Cummings, MD, is senior author of an international consensus statement proposing that gastrointestinal surgery may be a viable alternative therapy for type 2 diabetes. Dr. Cummings, Associate Professor of Medicine and an investigator at the Diabetes and Obesity Center of Excellence, was a convener of the 2007 International Summit held to evaluate the evidence and develop guidelines for the use of bariatric surgery in type 2 diabetes. The group recommended that such surgery be considered a specific diabetes intervention and not be limited to patients with BMI of greater than 35. The statement has been endorsed by 21 scientific societies, including the American College of Surgeons and the American Diabetes Association, and a task force was established to guide the study and development of diabetes surgery. How does uh, surgery cause diabetes type 2 to go away? Well, there's a lot of reasons, and I think um, the dramatic effect on diabetes is because of there's so many different beneficial effects. The obvious one is that it causes a lot of weight loss. And type 2 diabetes is very closely linked to being overweight and obese. Most people with the disease uh, have some degree of excess fat and that drives diabetes to occur. So anything that makes you lose weight will improve diabetes. The fascinating thing is that that's not the whole story because several large bodies of evidence indicate that in addition to the effects on body weight, Several of the bariatric operations or metabolic operations have direct anti-diabetes mechanisms that have nothing to do with body weight. And some of the evidence is, for example, typically diabetes will be gone within a few days or a few weeks after surgery, and nobody's really lost that much weight by that time. About a third of the patients with diabetes who have gastric bypass will be discharged from the hospital after their operation, the initial stay for their operation already off their diabetes meds and with normal blood sugar levels. The average hospital stay is two and a half days. Nobody can lose that much weight in two and a half days. Another line of evidence for these direct anti-diabetes effects is that if you look at the benefit on diabetes of a fixed amount of weight loss, say 10% weight loss, that you do with gastric bypass compared to diet and exercise, you get much more benefit on diabetes with gastric bypass induced weight loss and the same amount of weight loss from diet or exercise or maybe gastric banding, which is a purely mechanical, non-hormonal intervention. Number three, if the effect of surgery on diabetes was all because of its effect on weight, then the more weight you lose, the more your diabetes would go away. But that's not the case. Sometimes there's a relationship, but it's a very inconsistent relationship between the magnitude of weight loss and the degree to which diabetes is prevented, or if you have it, it goes away, or how long it stays away. And as well, there's a poor relationship between the amount of weight loss after gastric bypass and long-term outcomes like heart attacks and strokes and cancer. Um, we now have fourth body of evidence for weight-independent anti-diabetes effects, is we now have experimental variations of some of the, the classic bariatric operations that just recreate some of the intestinal change but don't affect the stomach. And they promote little or no weight loss at all, but can still be extremely effective against diabetes. So you've separated the anti-diabetic effect from the weight reducing effect. And then there's a few other lines of evidence that are fairly technical, but it's very clear that some of these operations, in particular gastric bypass and sleep gastrectomy, um, are, are specifically anti-diabetes interventions, and therefore can be considered metabolic, or some people call it diabetes surgery, and that sets the logic for considering using them to treat diabetes as their primary goal, even in a person who's not that obese, or not obese at all, but has diabetes. Professor, is it scientifically proven? Yes. Um, there's extremely high quality data on relatively short-term studies of a few years that can allow us to say the following. In half a dozen different randomized controlled trials, which is the best quality data we have, the various operations we now have, gastric bypass, sleep gastrectomy, um, biliary pancreatic diversion, and gastric banding, has each been shown to be more effective than any diet or exercise or medic medicine program at getting rid of diabetes between one and two and three years for that degree of follow-up with acceptable side effects 
and including among people all the way from severely obese to just mildly overweight. Now, if you ask the question, is it scientifically proven that surgery is more effective at not making you die or preventing heart attacks? That requires much longer term data. And we have a lot of data on that from non-randomized trials. So what we call level two evidence instead of level one. Much of it comes from a big study where over 4,000 Swedish patients in the SOS study, not randomly, but they chose to have either surgery or not surgery to treat their obesity. And then that whole co cohort was followed for 20 years. And in that study, it's clear that the people who chose to have surgery had better outcomes over 20 years in terms of less diabetes, less high blood pressure and cholesterol, fewer heart attacks, strokes, cancer, and they died less than the people who decided not to have surgery and went on with medical and behavioral treatments. But this was not a randomized controlled trial, so there is a nugget of concern that maybe the people who elected to have surgery were inherently different from those who didn't at the beginning, and they were more motivated to do something active about their health. If that's true, they may have also exercised more, smoked less, ate better, and so on. And that's a concern with the non-randomized controlled trial data. So we're now working on getting randomized controlled trial data where the decision to do surgery or not surgery is not in the, in the participant's hands, but it's a flip of the coin. And we have that data for a three-year follow-up, and we're now trying to do it for more like 20-year data, but it's going to take a while. What do you see in the role of surgery? The role of surgery is quite strong in patients of even mild degrees of obesity with type 2 diabetes as a treatment that you should use if people have not failed the first few options. So we would all agree that anybody with diabetes should start by trying to diet, diet better and exercise more. Simple stuff, completely harmless. And if that works, no one would advocate the use of any medicine or surgery. And then, if it doesn't work, which is usually the case, um, there are some very simple medicines that are usually considered the first line of therapy, and I would agree. Metformin is the most obvious one. Um, and another is a class of drugs called sulfonylureas. If both of those are insufficient, which they are in many cases, then I think the role of surgery is to be one of the options that could be considered next, along with all the other classes of drugs that you might consider. So after those interventions, exercise and diet, metformin, sulfonylureas. If those haven't worked, your choices are insulin, a class of drug called glitazones, another one called acrobos, another one called DPP4 inhibitors, and another one called um, GLP-1 agonists. Just consider five different classes of diabetes drugs. Or surgery. And I would think surgery is one of the options that could be an alternative uh, to be considered among that group of, of medicines after the first really simple ones have failed. Can normal weight patients benefit from this metabolic surgery? Yes, if they have diabetes. So the principle of, di of metabolic surgery is usually applied to surgery uh, performed to treat diabetes. And there are people who are not obese and, and do have diabetes. Um, if they have type 1 diabetes, which is the autoimmune kind where the immune system gets confused and attacks your own cells that make insulin. We don't pretend that surgery will help that. That only represents 5% of all diabetes. For the other 95% of common type 2 diabetes, um, surgery seems to be beneficial to treat that in people of all BMI ranges, although the amount of evidence for really low body weight people is pretty small and being developed. But there's a lot of information uh, on benefits of surgery to treat diabetes in highly obese people, moderately obese people, mildly obese people, and to some extent there's a pretty good evidence base in overweight people. Now if you ask about truly normal weight diabetic people, which sometimes happens among vulnerable populations like East Asians and South Asians, there's a lot of people that would not be, you wouldn't look at them and think they're obese, or even overweight, but they may have diabetes. Um, we think that it's beneficial in them too, but we're currently working on clinical trials to make sure that that's true. So the real solid data to support that are underway. Professor, is the surgery cheaper in the long run?
Some studies show that bariatric surgery will eventually pay for itself, but it takes a month, a, a, quite a few years for that to happen because the operation itself has a big upfront cost. But even thinking that way is not the right way to think of it. No other intervention in medicine is asked to be, we, we do not ask any other intervention in medicine to be free or cost saving or, or make us money. We ask that it be reasonably affordable. So if you have heart surgery, that costs money for sure. You never get that back, that back. But the question is, was it affordable for the benefit it provides? And the, the main measurement for that is how much money does it cost to provide one year of good quality living? It's called a quality adjusted life year. And the cost of surgery for that ranges between $3,000 and $13,000, depending on which study you read. The widely accepted societal standard for cost-effective healthcare interventions is $50,000 per quality adjusted life year. That's about what renal dialysis costs. So everybody would say anything below $50,000 is affordable healthcare. In my country, we healthcare insurance pay payers even do pay for things that are much more than $50,000 like lung reduction surgery costs $200,000 per quality of this year. So the answer is, bariatric surgery is very cost effective and affordable. As to whether it's a freebie, no, it, it, it may not pay for itself outright, but it's very affordable for the benefit it confers on health. Are there any negative side effects for this? Yes, there are. All operations carry some risk, but it's important to put them in the perspective of what's the risk of not having the operation. So the safety of gastric bypass in terms of mortality is about the same as these common operations. Gastric banding is even safer than that, and gastric, much safer, it's almost no one ever dies from that, and gastric um, sleep gastrectomy lies between the two. Safer than gastric bypass, not quite as safe as gastric banding, but they're all in the range of gallbladder remov removal or less. Um, some people will have other complications though that are, that are not life-threatening, but annoying. They have to take antibiotics or occasionally have to go back for a second operation to repair a leak or some such thing. Chances of something like that happening are, are in the neighborhood of 5 to 10 percent with most bariatric operations. But how does the risk of problems from the surgery weigh against the risk of troubles from continuing to be diabetic if you don't have the surgery? And there's a lot of studies now on what we call all-cause mortality. It just says, it asks the question, among people who choose to have surgery, how much do they die over the next 10 years compared to similar people who choose not to have surgery? And there are about 10 different studies and they all have the same result. They're all-cause mortality from patients who have surgery, who are obese enough to qualify by the current standards, is less than the deaths among people who choose not to have the surgery. Are, and are also obese enough to qualify by our current standards. Um, because in, in the latter group, they remain obese and probably, possibly diabetic, and they might have blood pressure problems and cholesterol problems, all of which are not as treated as well without surgery. Professor, do you have any final comments for our listeners? I guess if there's a take-home message for people considering whether surgery might be for them, it's this. If you're even moderately or, or severely obese and you're wondering whether surgery is for you and you're scared that it might be dangerous. It's very compelling evidence that shows that if you have the operation in the long run there's much better chance that you're going to live longer than if you choose not to have bariatric surgery and just plug away with diet, exercise and medicines to try to treat your obesity. This is clear for people who are moderately to severely obese and it's especially true if you also have diabetes. The reduction in diabetes related deaths is 92% for the people who have surgery compared to those who don't. It's a more complicated story for people who are not obese or mildly overweight and have diabetes. We think that surgery is also beneficial for them and it certainly gets rid of diabetes more than the medicines do in the short run, like one or two or three years. But we don't yet have data on whether that translates into longer life. Thank you so much for your time, Dr. Cummings. Entirely my pleasure, and thank you for your interest in this important field. It's a pleasure to be able to get the information out to the viewing public about this powerful tool against obesity and diabetes, which is very underused. Um, 
uh, among people qualified for bariatric surgery under even just the strictest of guidelines, about 1% of people who qualify actually have the operation. And many, many more than that could potentially benefit from it if they just knew about it.